What a year Steph Curry has had as I bring Tim Legler into the conversation. Steph and the Warriors versus John Morant and the Grizzlies tonight for the final playoff spot in the NBA this season. Legs, let's look at some over-unders and what we expect tonight. Steph, three points, three-point shots at 6.5. So six and a half, over-under on threes tonight for Steph Curry. I'm going over on threes for Steph Curry, and part of that reason is because I think when you take a look at defensively Memphis, their bigs are going to have a more difficult time getting up on these ball screens than a lot of teams, and I think Steph Curry is going to get some space. He's going to get hot. He's lit these guys up before. I think he goes for seven or more threes. How about five and a half assists over under for Steph tonight? Yeah, that should be easy, and I think he's going to get several of those early in the game because Memphis will come out with the right approach. They're going to blitz him on every ball screen, and that's going to lead to Steph Curry giving the ball up, uh, which is going to lead to some open shots for guys. So I think Steph Curry gets that number fairly easily tonight against Memphis. And then finally, how about points? 38 and a half is the over-under on Steph. Which way do we go? Yeah, that's a high number, Greedy. When we start predicting guys basically are going to get 40 points, that's where I draw the line a little bit. I mean, that's an enormous number uh, to, to predict an over on. He, he might do it. I'm not going to be shocked by it. But I think more likely, you know, you see somewhere in that 30, 35 range, 40 is such a high number. I have a hard time telling people to go play some money on a guy getting that in a specific game. All right, fair enough. But that said, you were the one who made the point on my radio show yesterday, and it sort of took my show in an entirely different direction from what I was expecting, and it was extremely well made. Oh, here you are over here. Um, about Steph Curry and what this season has meant and done for his place in the history of the game. And I would love you to make that here because I thought it was an extremely interesting way to look at this. Well, I just got to thinking about it watching him play this year and how remarkable it, remarkable it was for him to dial it back to basically the same level he was at as an MVP a number of years ago. Most guys are not going to revert back to that form. He's done it, particularly after injuries. And here's what I started thinking about. You know, at the time he won those back-to-back -back MVPs, and one of those was unanimous, by the way. He was 27 years old. And then he accepted Kevin Durant coming to that team. And, and in a way, Kevin Durant and Steph Curry both cannibalized each other's chances at individual accolades for team success. And he won a couple more championships with Kevin Durant. But the guy was just entering the prime years. He was a unanimous MVP, a two-time MVP, and he was never mentioned as an all-time great. He was talked about as greatest shooter we've ever seen, most entertaining player in the league, all of those things. But Greeny, if you think about it, he was never really put on those lists of all-time greats. He wasn't talked about in a discussion with maybe the second greatest point guard of all time behind Magic Johnson. He just wasn't. And we didn't know if he was ever going to get there because his career went in a different direction by adding Durant to that team. So by doing what he has done this year and reverting back to one of the best players in the league, and now you see he's one of the three finalists for MVP, it makes you wonder what would Steph Curry have done over the last five years or so if he never got Kevin Durant in Golden State? And you know, Klay Thompson was healthy for those several years if Durant wasn't there. The team success they would have had with what Curry is doing right now makes you think this is what it would have looked like, and if that's the case, he probably has at least one more MVP. He he may have another ring or two, and now everything is different when you start talking about ranking him historically. I think it's time, based on what he did this year, and that Lakers game cemented it for me, because he faced an elite defense and still rose to the occasion on that stage. Steph Curry now has to be regarded on those short lists of the greatest who have ever done it. It's, it's an excellent point, and I completely agree with every word that you said. With that thought in mind, because you touched on it, he was announced yesterday as one of the three finalists for MVP this year with Jokic and with Joel Embiid. Who gets your vote? I think I'm going to go with Jokic. It was Embiid for me most of the year, but I do understand the, the argument that, hey, look, the guy missed time with injuries. That also probably took LeBron out of the mix. It took James Harden out of the mix. Uh, so you have Embiid still in the mix, but I think Jokic, based on the fact that, look, 26, 11, and 8, uh, you know, ridiculous numbers, particularly what, what he shoots from the field, from the three, the way he controls the game as a passer for that team. They were also 22 games over 500. That all has to play in. And then the last one, and I think this is a good message to send. He was there every night 
And in a season in which you rarely saw star players matched up against each other every time you turned into a marquee game, let's reward that. So I think if that's the final argument, the guy was there every single night in a season in which nobody else was, I think that should be enough to tilt it in his direction, and ultimately I think he will win the award. But the run that Curry has gone on to thrust himself from a guy that probably was top 10 two months ago to, to a finalist for the MVP is all you need to know about what we've been watching out of Steph Curry. Now that's fair. Uh, let me ask you one more thing while I have you. Lakers-Warriors the other night was epic. The Lakers are in a few days rest and a date with the Suns. How do you see that series? Phoenix is young, but they have the veteran leadership in Chris Paul. Lakers have looked a little bit rusty. Who do you like in that series? Lakers are that fighter, Greeny, the bell rung. They came out. They, they, they had, the other fighter took two huge uppercuts. They missed. They didn't get knocked out early. Now they breathe a sigh of relief because now you're talking about a best of seven against a team with that kind of length defensively, with that kind of offensive talent that can beat you with a power game or a skill game. Ultimately, the Lakers have too much. This is going to be a good series, and every game could be competitive, but ultimately, when you've got LeBron and A and the way that they can physically overwhelm you in the paint and around the rim and control the game in that way, I, I got to put the nod to the Lakers. I think six games. If it goes seven, I won't be shocked, but I don't think this is going to be a short series, five or less. Phoenix is too good for that, and we need to give them the credit and respect that they deserve, but you're talking about going up against a champion that's now healthy and a team that can now breathe a sigh of relief that they avoided catastrophe. They are in a best of seven. They will get better each and every game, each and every round in the postseason. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.